PBG is known for being one of the most ruthless sets in Chicago. They're an insane faction of the gangster disciples. They've been known to slide on their ops with no remorse. But as of lately, it's been coming out that not only is PBG willing to slide on their ops, but if you a part of ICG or the insane cutthroat gangsters, and you do something wrong, then they just might slide on you. According to rumors, young Pappy was one of those victims that suffered from the hands of his own gang. I don't know how true it is, but it does make sense, seeing as how it was confirmed by a couple of the guys that were a part of PBG. Who you tell on to come home? It ain't too many of y'all left, is it? The whole city put the belt on y'all ass. It don't matter, like I said, it's me by myself. Niggas, call them niggas. But just know, I ain't going to gunpoint. Our own homies killed our homies, not the ops for the record. I mean, y'all been lining each other up since Pappy. That ain't shit new. Hey, we insane cut those gangsters, baby. That ain't our name for no reason, Goofy. Better hope we don't catch you. Gully Gibson was definitely a well-respected PBG member at one time. He was seen in a lot of the earlier footage that PBG had. He was also a rapper out of PBG. What went wrong? Nobody really knows the true story, but we do know that something definitely went wrong because he ended up losing his life. Gully Gibson, AKA Angelo Pullum, was 36 when he died, which by Chicago's standards, he was an OG. Before he died, Gully wasn't in a good place, so his family had to put up a GoFundMe account to finance his burial. PBG Stevo, who was the brother of Bang the Hitter, was said to be the one that pulled the trigger. Police would end up arresting him a year and some later after the fact. There's all type of speculation on why the back door took place, and there's still speculation on who actually did it. Some people say that Steve O is not the one that did it. And if you look at the camera footage, unfortunately, you can't really tell who it was. The only way that the police can really identify PBG Steve O is if they understood his mannerisms and body language. Hey, PBG Steve O was incarcerated for it. The police would get him hiding out in Cabrinda Green projects. A lot of people say that this happened because for one, there's definitely a separation between PBG and ICG with some members being a part of both, but some members claiming PBG individually and some members claiming ICG individually. Most of the older guys are ICG and most of the younger guys are PBG because most of the older guys really didn't know who felt like that. And it's been said that Gully was stealing money from some of the guys. And it's also been said that Gully told on Bang the Hitter, I have no idea, I repeat, I have no idea how true these rumors are. But what I do know is it was definitely a back door. Why do I say that? Because in the city of Chicago, and in any city I would think, anytime the one that gets killed is having a conversation with the person that killed him, and he's off guard to the point to where he turns his back, this is no enemy. This is someone who he knows and he feels comfortable enough with to let his guard down. Any op pull up, and it ain't going to be no talking. It's just going to be shooting. And I think that what we can learn from the back door 
of gully is this. You have to be aware of your surroundings to the point to where you damn near can envision things before they happen. Obviously, Gully had did something to the point to where he should have known to watch his back. In many hoods right now in Chicago, within these sets, there are subsets. And within these subsets, they're beefing with each other. A lot of it doesn't get broadcasted on the internet, but that does not mean that it's not going on. I can name a thousand sets in Chicago that has sets within it that are beefing with one another. And a lot of these murders that we think that their ops are doing are actually committed by people of the same gang. Two, I always say never put too much trust in friends, learn how to use enemies, and try not to get slimed out. Let me break down exactly what that means. When you have friends or so-called buddies, a lot of times the things that you do for them is not appreciated because when you do something for somebody, inevitably they feel indebted to you versus them actually earning what you did for them. When you do something for an enemy or someone that you once had differences with, they're more likely to be more appreciative. Why? Because they feel as though they have something to prove. There's been books wrote about people teaming up with people that they were once enemies with. And I can say myself through personal experience that guys that I've had fights and quarrels with have turned out to be some of my best friends. I said all that to come back and say this once again. Never put too much trust in friends. Learn how to use enemies and try not to get slimed out. Steve is in the county awaiting his fate. I doubt if the police is going to be able to solve this murder or convict him of this murder strictly off this footage. Because like I said, you cannot see his face in the footage. But I do not know if they have any more evidence in this case. This has been another episode of Slimed Out. Make sure that y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. Let's pipe back up. It's your boy, SCNTV. And this time we worldwide, baby. I'm out.